Hello again and welcome back. In this tutorial, I want to cover common design patterns that we'll find across iOS and how to build them, um, starting with <clears throat> multiple view controllers or multiple screens. So the first thing I want to do is create a new Xcode project. I'm going to go into the platform. I'm going to select iOS. I'm going to select app. And then I can give this whatever uh, name whatever I want. So tutorial for me, but you can name it whatever you want. Interface should be storyboard and language should be Swift. And then we're not going to use any of these. So you don't have to have these checked. I'm going to click on next and I'll save mine in the desktop. Okay, cool. So now um, we have our view controller class and we also have it in our storyboard. Now um, I showed you last time how to rename this view controller uh, by going to here, changing the class name, changing the file name, and then changing it in the storyboard. But there's a shortcut for this. Um, that works most of the time. Sometimes it can be a little buggy, but um, if you right click on the class name, click on refactor and then rename, and then you can select what you want to rename. So I'm going to rename uh, the one in the storyboard. I'm going to rename the file and I'm actually going to also rename uh, the, this comment as well. And I can call this, uh, I can change the name to whatever I want. So if I click on, if I uh, type first view controller, then now I click enter you'll see that it changes it over here, it changes it over here in the comment, it changes the file name, and it goes to the storyboard and changes it within the identity inspector of that uh, view controller. So everything is changed and we only have to take one step. In the storyboard now, let's go ahead and um, add another view controller. So if I click on this plus button, or if I type shift command L, I'll be able to bring up this window and um, you'll see a bunch of these different things that I can add inside. Now, view controllers are the ones in uh, orange circles. So you can see here that um, UI view controller is what we're looking for. And you can type that up here as well, UI view controller. Um, so I drag it in. Let's give this one a background color of yellow. And then this one a background color of indigo. Perfect. So let's get a button that can uh, display this other screen for us. The first thing I want to do is drag a button from that same menu that we saw earlier. So if I type Shift Command L, I'm going to look for button and I can just drag that in there. Now remember, uh, we have to add constraints to, these to this button because um, it's, it's centered in here, but if I take a different phone, um, for example, I don't know, the iPhone SE, you'll see that it's no longer centered. So if I go back to the iPhone 11, I will add um, the center vertically and center horizontally constraints by going into here, the alignment constraints and clicking on horizontally and vertically centered in the container. And I can add two of these constraints. Now we don't actually have to add the width and the height constraints for this one because it already knows how big the button needs to be based on the text inside of that button. Now, um, let's rename the button to uh, show second screen. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to format it a bit more. Uh, let's say I want to make the, the text a little bit bigger. I can go into here. Now Xcode has this bug where if I click and if I try to change the point size, it won't let me. So I have to select a, a different font and then back to custom. And then now it'll let me um, change the font size. Cool. So we have our button. Now, in other tutorials online, uh, they'll show you how to present this view controller using a thing called segways. So, so they use segways. And I'm going to show you that real quick. So if I click on this button, and if I control and drag from this button to the second uh, view controller, you'll see that there's like a, a blue box highlighting it. And if I release, then you can then it pops up with this menu. And I can select which type of um, segue I want to perform. So let's do like a show. And you'll see now that if I run my app. So I'm running my app now. And if I click on this button, you'll see that it shows up with the second uh, screen. So I'm clicking on it and it's popping up. Now, this method uh, will get the job done if you're building a very basic app that just displays another screen. But um, in reality, apps are much more complicated than that. And you would rarely use segues when you're building an actual app. So I'm going to teach you how to do the correct way, or the better way, as I like to call it. Um, first of all, we're going to 
click on this controller again, we're going to go into its identity inspector and we're going to give it some ID. So in here you can type whatever you want as long as you remember it and you spell it correctly. So I can call this like second controller. Um, as long as I spell it here and encode correctly, then it will be fine. Now um, let's go ahead and open this storyboard in a new window. So I'm option and I'm clicking on the um, file. Option clicking on the file opens it in a new window for me. It might be something else for you. Uh, again, you can change that in preferences and then into navigation. And then optional navigation is use a separate window. I'm going to go back into my code for my first view controller. And I'm going to create a link between this button and my view controller. And um, if you remember from last time, we control and drag from the button on the screen, on the view, um, on the storyboard. And we drag it into our code. And I'm not going to create an, um, I'm not going to create an outlet. I'm not going to like store it as in a variable because we don't actually need to store it in a variable. We just need to have something happen when we tap on this button. So I'm just going to put it into here. And I'm going to create an action, and I can uh, use the, call this action whatever I want. So I'll call it did tap button connect. And um, now we're going to have to create this new controller. So in Swift, you can have multiple instances um, of the same view controller, um, and that can get a little confusing. Like I can create multiple copies of this um, view controller. So we're going to create one copy here. I'm going to say let second controller. And how would I go about creating this copy? Um, first, we would need to access um, the storyboard that it's located in. So I can do UI storyboard, name and bundle. And so the name of our storyboard is main. You can see that in here in the left side uh, where my cursor is. The name is main. The bundle is nil. It always and almost always will be nil. Now, this is creating a new storyboard for me. And from this storyboard, whoops, I'm going to rename this variable to uh, storyboard. From this storyboard, I can do storyboard.instantiate new controller with identifier. And I'm going to bind this to a variable. I'm going to say this is the second controller. And the identifier is the identifier that we gave it in the storyboard. So if I, again, click on this controller into its identity inspector, this is the identifier, the storyboard ID. I'm going to copy and paste it in here. And so that um, created that view controller for us. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to present it. So for this, I'm going to do self.present. And you'll see that there is a method here, present. Um, if I click on it, then I put in the view controller to present, and that is our second controller. Do we want to present it in an animated fashion? We do, so I'm going to put true. And then uh, we'll cover uh, closures in the future, but for now, just put nil in here. I'm going to run this app. And if I click on this button, you'll see that it shows the controller again. Notice that we deleted that. Um, we deleted that segue, so it's using the code now to show the controller. Now, what is the benefit of this method? So we actually get um, to do stuff with this controller before we present it. So that's why we, we prefer using this method when we present controllers. So for example, um, let's say I wanted to change the background color before I presented this view controller. So first of all, we would have to do second controller dot load view if needed. And then we're going to do second controller dot back dot view dot background color and we can set it to like let's do system red. If I click on it, it's a red view controller. So um, we kind of got the chance to edit it before we presented it, which is very useful. OK, now let's imagine that we want to do more than just set this background color to red. We want to customize it a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my storyboard. <clears throat> I'm going to add, I don't know, some label. And we'll have one for like um, your first name. I'm going to set the background color or like the text color to let's do white. And I'll put here my first name. And then I also want to 
have a last name. So I'm going to put in last name. I'm going to make it also white. Let's edit this font a bit to make it look better. So I'm going to set it as a bold and I'll increase the size a bit. Okay. Similar to the button, this all, uh, iOS already knows how big this needs to be. So we can just set X and Y constraints. So I'm going to align the center vertically and horizontally. And then over here, I'm going to have this last name and it's going to be right underneath it. So I'm going to add this Y constraint. Um, I'm going to make it, I don't know, let's say eight from the top. And if you notice, there's red on the sides. It doesn't know where it needs to be on the X axis. So we're going to add some horizontal constraints. Um, I'm going to center it horizontally in the container. Perfect. So now we have this first name and last name. And then I'm going to, um, let's say I want to run my app now. So if I run my app, you'll notice that we have our first name and last name. Our background is still red, which is good, but we can't really set it. Like, how are we going to set this first name and last name before we present the controller? So, I mean, if I went like here, I mean, I have no way of setting it because right now this is just a generic like UI view controller. If I went and like tried to set the label of, you know, first name, like, you know, there's no such thing as like a first name. So we're going to have to create a class for this controller. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to right click on this folder. I'm going to create a new file. And then Swift has a template so we can use Coco Touch class. And you'll see that it's a subclass of UI view controller. We're going to call this second view controller. So second view controller. We don't have to create a XIV file and the language is Swift. So I'm going to click next. Go ahead and click create. I'm going to drag it up below our first view controller file. And now we've created this file. So we can assign this class to this UI view controller. So if I click on it, if I click on its identity inspector and I can click on this arrow and start typing in second view controller, it'll auto complete for me. And so now we can create a link between the storyboard and our file and our code itself. So if I go in here, I'm on the second view controller class. So, so here's the thing. Let's imagine that I want to create this link from this button to this file, right? It actually won't let me. If I click on here, you know, there's no such thing. Like I can't put an outlet and I can't put an action. It's really weird. So what I can do is if I link this controller to this class, like if I set this one, um, make sure that the class corresponds to this um, class and code, then I can link these items. So I can link it and I can insert an outlet. So we're going to call this first name label. Same for the second. And as a general rule of thumb, you always want to make UI elements private because we don't want other classes messing around with the components of our UI. What we can do though is we can create a, a function here called func setup, and we're going to put some parameters. So we're saying um, first name is going to be a string, last name is going to be a string as well, and then we can set the UI ourselves. So we're going to do first name label dot text is equal to first name. So this is a string. Um, and then we're going to do last name label. So this is the actual label element on our storyboard. We're going to set its text property to the last name that they give us over here. And so now if I instantiate a new um, second controller, we should be able to second control that set up right wrong so we actually are still treating this like swift still believes that this is a ui view controller however this is actually a subclass of ui view controller right second view controller is a subclass of ui view controller so we need to tell this when we create this variable that it's not a ui view controller it's actually a second view controller so i'm gonna cast it using as second view controller. And this is how we cast things. So if this is a subclass of whatever this is, then our casting will work. And second view controller is a subclass of UI view controller. 
and this uh, this object is indeed a second view controller so this should have no problems so now if I do second controller dot setup then I have that option I could put in a first name so let's put um, Shahar last name um, my last name is Endor and if I run it you'll notice that I type on I click on this thing and I can actually set these properties um, before we present the view controller which is very handy so we can't do that with segways and that's why we instantiate view controllers through code one more thing is that we don't actually have to create this new storyboard every view controller if it's inside a storyboard will have its own storyboard property so if I do self dot storyboard you'll see that it's an optional because we can create view controllers without a storyboard just like I showed you earlier but um, if I do that storyboard and this first view controller is defined inside this storyboard over here, so we can uh, we know that this exists. So we can just go ahead and do self dot storyboard done instantiate with view controller. So we don't actually have to create a new storyboard. So I'll run it again, and you'll see that. This works just fine. One more very important thing that I want to point out is that let's say we want to dismiss this uh, view controller after we present it. So let's put a button on here. I'm going to call this button um, done. I'm going to change the color so it'll be easier to tell where the button is located. There we go. And we can constrain it from the bottom. Let's do like 128. And let's also center it horizontally. So now the constraints are defined. And I'm going to, in the second view controller, because this button is now located in the second view controller, I'm going to create a, an action for when this button is tapped. So I'm going to go into here, control and drag into my code, and then I can put in um, dismiss or done button And so if I want to dismiss this view controller when I tap on this button, all I have to put in here is dismiss animated if we want to be animated, true. And then the completion is no. And then, um, and then we can run it. And if I click on this show second controller and then I click on this done, it automatically gets dismissed for me. So I don't have to drag it down anymore. Um, one more thing I want to point out is, um, let's say I don't want to enable them to pull down on this um, controller once I present it. I don't want them to be able to dismiss it this way. So I can go into the view did load, um, or anywhere really, um, and type self dot is modal in presentation and set that to true. And when I run this, you'll notice that I can't pull it down anymore. It doesn't let me but I can tap this done button to dismiss it. Perfect. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, thanks for watching and please DM me if you have any questions.